The Lifeboat by George R. Sims. Been out in the lifeboat often, I ice her often enough. When it's rougher than this, Lord bless you, this ain't what we call rough. It's when there's a gale blowing and the waves rush in and break on the shore with a roar like thunder and the white cliffs seem to shake. When the sea is a mass of waters and the bravest man holds his breath, when he hears the call for the lifeboat, his summons may be to death. That's when we call it rough, sir. But if we can't get a rough float, the rowers in up brave fellows to help us to man the boat. You heard of the Royal Helen, the ship that was wrecked last year? Yon be the rock she struck on, the boat that went out be here. The night she struck were reckoned the worst that ever we had, and this be a coast in winter where the weather be awful bad. The beach was strewn with wreckage, and to tell you the truth, sir, then were the only time we ever had trouble to get the men. The single men were willing, and six of them volunteered. But most in the series married, and the wives that night were scared. Our women ain't chicken-hearted when it comes to saving lives. But death that night looked certain, and our wives be only wives. Their lot ain't bright at the vest, sir, but when a man lies dead, it ain't only the um, husband missing, it's the children's daily bread. So our women began to whimper and plead with the chaps to stay. I only heard about it after, cos that night I was kept away. I was up in me cottage yonder, where my wife lay nigh her end. She'd been ailing all the winter and nothing would make her mend. The doctor had given her up, sir, and knelt by her side and prayed with eyes as red as her babies that death's hand might yet be stayed. I heard the wild wind howling and I looked on the wasted form and I thought of the awful shipwreck that had come in the raging storm. The wreck of my little homestead. The wreck of my dear old wife who'd sailed with me forty years o'er the troublous waves of life. <coughs> and I looked in her eyes so sunken as had been my arbor lights to tell of the sweet home haven in the wildest, darkest night. I knew she was sinking quickly. She knew that her end was nigh, but she never spoke of the troubles which on her heart did lie. For we had one great big sorrow with Jack, our only son, who got into trouble in London as lots of lads had done. Then he bolted, his masters told us. He was always what folk called wild, for the day that I told his mother, a dear face never smiled. We heard no more about it. We never knew where he went, and the mother pined and sickened for the message he never sent. I had my work to think on. She had a grief to nurse, and it ate away at her heartstrings, and her health grew worse and worse, and the night of the Royal Helen went down on yonder stand. I knelt and watched her dying, holding her wasted hand. She moved in a doze a little, and her eyes they opened wide, and she seemed to be searching for something, when, as she looked from side to side. And half to herself she murmured, Where's Jack to say goodbye? It's hard not to see me, darling, and kiss him afore I die. I bent and kissed her softly as the tears ran down my cheeks. I opened the mouth, the mouth to whisper the words I couldn't speak. 
when the door of the room burst open and the, me mates were there outside with the news that the boat was launching, you're wanted there, leader cried. You've never refused to go, John. You'll put these cowards right. There's a dozen lies, or maybe, as lie in our hands tonight. It was old Ben Brown, the captain. He laughed at the women's doubts. He'd always been first on the beach, sir, when the boat was going out. I didn't move. I just pointed to the white face on the bed. I said, I can't go, mate, me murmured. In an hour she may be dead. I cannot go and leave her to die in the night alone. As I spoke, Ben raised his lantern and the light on me wife was shown. I saw her eyes fixed strangely with a pleading look on me. Her trembling finger pointed through the door to the raiding sea. John go and God's will be done for every lad on that ship John is some poor mother's son. Her head was full of the boy sir. She was thinking maybe one day for want of a hand to save him his life might be cast away. John go and the Lord watch over me and bear me to see the light and bring you safe, she whispered, out to the storm tonight. I bent and kissed her softly and tried to hide my tears. And my mates outside, when they saw me, set up the three hearty cheers. Then I wiped my eyes with my knuckles and I turned to old Ben and said, I'll see you again, maybe, lad. When the sea gives up it's dead. We launched the boat in the tempest. Though death was the goal in view, there never a one that doubted if the craft would see it through. But our boat she bore it bravely, and weary and wet and weak. He came in hail of that vessel we dared so much to seek. And as we came upon her, she gave a fearful roll and went down in the seething whirlpool with every living soul. We moved to the spot and shouted, for all around were dark. But only the wild wind answered the cry of our lunging bark. I was straining my eyes and watching when I saw it, I heard a cry and I saw past our bows or something on the crest of the wave dashed by. I stretched out my hand and seized it. I pulled it aboard and then I stumbled and struck my forehead and fell like a log on Ben. I remember the hum of voices and then I know no more, till I came to me senses here, sir, here in me home ashore. My forehead was tightly bandaged. I lay on me little bed, me had slipped, so they told me after, and a rower had struck me head. My mates came in and whispered. They'd heard I was coming round. At first I could hardly hear them. It seemed like a buzzing sound. But as soon as me head grew clearer and accustomed to hear them speak, I knew I'd lain like that, sir, for many a long, long week. I guess what me mates were hiding for their dear old shipmates' sake. I knew by their puzzled faces they had some news to break. Then I lifts me head from the pillow and I says to old Ben, look here, tell, I, I, I'm able to stand it, tell me and never fear. Not one of them ever answered. And presently Ben go, goes out and the others swip, slipped away like and so I said, what's this about? Why can't they tell me plainly that my dear old wife is dead? Then I lay again on the pillar, 
and eased my aching head. I lay like that for a minute, till I heard a voice cry, John! And I thought it must be a vision that my weak eyes gazed upon, for there by the bedside standing up and well was my wife. And who do you think was with her? Why, Jack, as large as life. It was him, as I'd say, from drowning. The night, as the light boat went to the wreck of the Royal Helen, that that the vision meant. They brought us ashore together. He'd knelt by his mother's bed, and the sudden joy had raised her like a miracle from the dead. And mother and son together, they nursed me back to life. So when my eyes woke from the darkness, I looked on me son and wife. Jack is our right hand now, sir. It were Providence pulled him through. He's always first on the beach, sir, when the lifeboat wants a crew.